I'm joined by House Financial Services Committee Chairwoman Maxine Waters, who finds herself now as one of the leading voices in Congress as lawmakers continue deliberations on a next round of economic stimulus. Chairwoman, thank you so much for joining us. And on a personal note, I am deeply sorry and sending my condolences for the loss of your sister. I've been praying for you and your family. I want to begin this interview, however, with the remarkable, remarkable uh, unemployment numbers that came out earlier this morning and your response to it, Chairwoman. Well, you're absolutely correct. It is remarkable. And uh, we know that people uh, need this unemployment money uh, that they have coming to them. We have a problem with the states being overwhelmed uh, with the numbers and their systems are not uh, prepared to handle it, but we're doing everything that we can. But in addition to that, because of unemployment, we've got to make sure that we do everything uh, we can to ensure that people have a decent quality of life. Uh, they've got to be able to pay the rent. They've got to be able to put food on the table. They've got to be able to put gasoline in the car to go to the grocery store. And so I am working very hard. I started out early on, and I wanted direct payments to the family for $2,000 for the adults and $1,000 for the children. It got negotiated with the Senate, and it ended up in the CARES package being basically $1,200 uh, to adults and uh, $500 to children. But we're going to improve on that. I want to improve on that, and I'm pushing again uh, for $2,000 for the adults and $1,000 for each child in the next package uh, that we are about to produce. In addition to that, I have focused with Mr. Heck and my committee on what we're going to do on rental assistance. We, <clears throat> we're we asking, you know, landlords and apartment owners uh, to place a moratorium on evictions. They're doing that in cities and states all over the country. But we certainly can't leave these small landlords in particular holding the bag. We've got to pay for it. So my legislation... Chairwoman, that's what I want to ask you. That's what I want to... Yes. That's what I want to ask you about is the rental assistance program, because right now we have an unemployment crisis in this country. How do we make sure, Chairwoman Waters, that this unemployment crisis doesn't become an eviction crisis? Well, I'm focused on it. We have legislation. It's going to be in the next package. It's just a matter of whether or not we can get the Senate to agree to the amount. My bill with Mr. Heck is $100 billion to assist renters, $100 billion. We know uh, that we are headed toward a crisis in this area. We know that landlords are worried about whether or not they're going to be able to make the mortgage payments on those units that they own, that the renters are in. And we have not overlooked it. I started working on this some time ago, was not able to get it into the supplemental, the emergency supplemental that we did. Uh, but I've been right. working with leadership. We will have something in, and it, right now I've targeted $100 billion for it. Chairwoman Waters, I mean, Speaker Pelosi, who spoke with uh, Bloomberg Television's David Weston yesterday, was very optimistic about getting a bill advanced uh, by the end of next week. But in terms of it, 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 it appears, based upon my reporting, that it's on a collision course with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. How optimistic are you, Chairwoman Waters, that this is going to end up on the president's desk, desk within the next two weeks? Well, first of all, I got to tell you that no matter what happens the day before, I end up every morning, every morning being optimistic. Yes, we're always on a collision course uh, with the Senate, with McDonald, uh, but we have to fight through it. We have to negotiate. This is where negotiating skills are most important. What do you know about some of the members who care about it? And if McDonald, uh, McDonald, uh, McDonald is uh, McConnell is not supportive of it, can you gather up uh, a number of Republicans who may be supportive of it so you can put some pressure on him? What leverage do you have? What is it you know that he wants and he cares about? And so it's a matter of tough negotiations. Yes, they're going to resist oftentimes as long as they can, but I want to tell you, uh, both Pelosi and Schumer are pretty good at what they do. And so we're not discouraged, we're not intimidated. We're going to negotiate, and we're going to go for what we believe is needed in order to give some support and security 
uh, to the people of this country. Right. Madam Chairwoman, one of the big things that you have a jurisdiction over on the Financial Services Committee is oversight uh, and, and making sure that all of the liquidity and all of the money that has been doled out to the banks, the large financial institutions, the small businesses, uh, that, that that is being uh, carefully watched over. Uh, can, you, can you give us an update on where your oversight is with, on, in regards to that? Uh, and do you have any concerns about how uh, the, the banking industry has handled all of this influx of, of cash? Yes, I do have some concerns, and the Oversight Committee is just getting started. But, of course, I worked through uh, some of the problems uh, that we had in getting the PPP uh, distributed equitably, uh, and so I know what the problems are. I do know that some of our big banks created portals for their concierge uh, uh, clients, and I do know that, at first, they were only dealing with people who had SB loans uh, with them already at the bank. I was disappointed uh, that there were people who had relationships and been dealing with the bank for 20 and 30 years uh, that were not accepted uh, with the applications that they were trying to uh, turn in. And so the banks uh, uh, in the first CARES bill did take care of, in my estimation, uh, too many big businesses. And many of those big businesses have been put to shame, and many of them are returning uh, the loans that they got. And so the money did run out, and a lot of the small businesses were left hanging. And so on the emergency supplemental, I created a $60 billion target that would go to the MDIs, uh, that is the, de the Minority Depository Institutions, and to the CP CDFIs uh, and the uh, micro lenders, uh, credit unions, and uh, to the community banks. These are the people who are closest to those small businesses, who know them, who know how to work with them. And so they have done an excellent job since we got that emergency bill passed. And they have been able to connect more with the small businesses. And when I targeted that money, uh, that gave them the liquidity that they needed in order to do the loans uh, that were so needed. And so many of them have found, uh, you know, uh, that going to the smaller lenders, they can do a lot better. They're right. still, they're we still eligible for PPP, and I'm still encouraging them to go. Uh, but yes, we are doing a lot better, and we're taking care of the smaller businesses now. Chairwoman Waters, we have 30 seconds left, but I want to get this question in. For minorities, for elderly workers and well, as well, they've been more negatively impacted by this economic crisis than other groups. What's your message to them? My message to them, particularly though older workers, is that we put an extra $600 for each of you in the first CARES bill because we wanted you yeah. to have protection above and beyond yeah. what you may be able to get on unemployment. And we're going to keep on looking out for right. you. You have friends in the Congress right. of the United States of America. We care about you. We're working Chairwoman for Waters. you. And we're going to keep going. <laughs>